Hello and welcome to episode 31 of my series as I build my way through the battle games in Middle Earth magazines. Now, this month we are staying in Osgiliath after the ruins from last month. This month we're going to be building an Osgiliath bridge, which is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to build on some stuff that we did previously. Some of the things that won't be in this video, I won't bother filming them again. If you want to see how to do it, I'll link to the previous video. For example, the open water and the, um, and the lake banks, which I did, did, did quite a long time ago now. Uh, really, really cool techniques. So um, if you want to watch that video, there'll be a link to that. Uh, but there's going to be some really interesting stuff in this in terms of modularity and in terms of extensions. Um, so I'm quite looking forward to this build. It should be quite a simple one. I'm not sure whether I'm going to have time this month with what's been going on in my life to do an alternative build, but if I can and I have some inspiration, then of course I will. Uh, but hopefully you'll enjoy this and you'll be able to build along and uh, make some great terrain for your wargaming tables. As usual, any comments? chuck them below. I love reading them. I respond to every single one, good or bad, uh, and they really do inspire and encourage me, even the negative ones, which, uh, uh, which can be really, really helpful and help me to improve, which is always a good thing as well. So anyway, let's have a look at this magazine, see what we're going to need, and get stuck into the build. So here we are, my, my magazine, the Osgiliath Bridge. So, bridges often form important strategic points when they are the only way to cross a natural barrier of a river. Those in the besieged city of Iskaliath are no exception. In this pack, we look at how to build a huge stone bridge like the ones found in that great city. It's pretty awesome, isn't it? Iskaliath is a sprawling city cut in two by the great river Anduin. The only connections between the east and west sides of the city are gigantic stone bridges, which become tactically vital in times of war. In this pack, we show you how to represent the River Anduin by reusing some of your lake sections from Pack 19, as well as how to construct an imposing bridge to span it. This scenery project is modular terrain and uses the skills you have learned from previous packs of Battle Games in Middle Earth. As I say, the lakes and shores, which I kind of mentioned a little bit incoherently in the, in the introduction is what we're going to reuse. I may make a few more. It does say this modelling project requires the lake from Pack 19's modelling workshop along with a few new lake sections. You will need to make two deep water sections and four extra shore sections. So I'll get those done um, and uh, probably not in, uh, as part of this video, but I'll get those done. They're going to be using exactly the same techniques. Um, but yeah, that's just to say they're the two. So build these first before starting the bridge, but leave them unpainted for the time being. Two of the shore sections and one deep water section will be used to support the bridge. So yeah, so I'll just get those made and they'll just appear in the video. The things you'll need, foam card, craft knife, plate or circular object, thin card, masking tape, PVA glue, super glue, textured wallpaper, <laughs> can never find that. Two centimetre thick styrene, polystyrene ceiling tiles, pins, textured masonry paint, and then the rest is the usual stuff, so the gravel and the paints and what have you. So we'll gather that together. I will make these lakes and shores. So if you're building along, that's what you want to do. Pause now and come back when you've done that. Um, and then we will crack on with step one, which is the side walls. Um, as I've said, I think this is going to be a relatively easy build looking at it. Um, but uh, we shall see. <laughs> we shall see indeed. It does look great, doesn't it? There we are. That's what we're going to end up with. Looks like there might be some scenic details. So maybe that might be what I do as an expansion or as an extension to this. Um, just a couple of scenic details. Um, I do have some ideas as well for, and since, since recording the intro, for how I might, what I might do as an expansion. Um, but yeah, let's see. Let's see how well this goes. Okay, so I've got my two... Um, sections here for the shore, for the bank, uh, and uh, I've just noticed it says to make four shore sections, but um, I'm not entirely sure why. Looking through uh, the magazine, I can't see where I need to have two more, um, so I might end up making four, but for now I'm just going to stick with two because you only need two for the side walls and for the slopes, and that's what we're about to attack next. So if we look over here, you can see that I've got some materials. Um, I've got the thin black XPS, which I like to use. It is the stuff that needs to be uh, scrubbed with a wire brush so that things can stick to it. Um, so I've got my wire brush ready, but I'm not going to need to get to that yet because this again took a couple of reads for me to completely understand what it was saying. So it's a little bit complicated in how it explains it, but actually when you read it, it's relatively easy. So let me read what it says and then explain what it means. The bridge consists of two slopes attached to the shore sections, which are there, and a middle part that is attached to a deep water section. 
Okay, the slopes require slightly more planning than the middle section because they overlap the part of the lake sections between the shore and the water, meaning that you have an uneven surface to work with. And what that means is this. So it's going to start here and it's going to go off over into the, into the water, obviously. So, and for each slope you need two pieces, one for each side. Uh, it, it belabors that point, but it's pretty obvious. You get one on each side. Uh, it then says you need four side walls in total, two for each slope. <coughs> <coughs> Which is also obvious, but that confused me for a bit because I thought it was saying I needed four for each uh, end of the bridge, but no, it's two for each end of the bridge. Okay, the, you need to cut two pieces of foam card to form the side walls. Uh, these will be roughly triangular, about 12 centimeters or four and a half inch high at the tall end and two and a half inch or one inch high at the other end. So it's going to be a, a parallelogram, a, a triangle with, the, with the, one of the um, ends, one of the corners cut off um, and that's the shape it's going to be. And that also was a little bit confusing how it explains it. It took me a few reads, but I've worked it out. Uh, and it says that the triangles will need to be about three centimetres shorter than the river section. So let's get my river section again and just talk through what that means. What it means is that we're going to measure this distance, which I know is 24 and a half centimetres. And so that means that my uh, triangles are going to be about 21 centimetres. And then when they're at this end, they will be 12 centimetres and then there will be a square that is, uh, which, which is roughly um, two centimetres at this end. Now, the purpose of that square, I believe, is to then cut off so that you can, um, so that the, 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 um, the side wall will sit here and you can cut a bit of it off and set it in so that it actually, so you can slice this end off um, and it will actually sit flush with this, with this uh, side of the bank. Um, so that's the purpose of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to measure and cut uh, the four triangles that I need. Uh, and when I've done that, I'll bring you back and we'll talk about the next step. There's a lot of talking there, but I found that quite complicated when I was reading the, the magazine and it took a couple of attempts to kind of get my head fully around what they were meaning. Now I think I do understand it. Hopefully I do because I'm about to make some cuts. Once again, I'm going to have to diverge slightly from the instructions. I think because I made these quite large, these, river, these sections, and I reckon that at however long this is, which is very long, um, this is going to be a very nice flat bridge. <laughs> it's going to have, not going to have any problem with sliding, but it also is very long. The way that they describe is to make a mark here, about five mil from the end, um, which is very close. My first mark here is actually 10 mil, and I've actually decided to go 20 mil. Um, and it then says to put that mark against the edge of your river section. So let me just uh, pull that over quickly. Right, so you can see that a little bit easier now. So what it says to do is to take your mark here, put it against the edge of the river of the section, and then, um, <coughs> mark where the uh, ramp starts to, where the, where the flat is. Now, um, I've done that, so I've got my mark here, five, uh, but I've doubled it so it's two mis 20 millimeters in, and I've put a mark where the top of the, ra of the bank is, um, but I haven't got, I mean, there's no way you're gonna get a plate which is gonna be able to, which is what it says to do, put a plate and draw uh, an arc and what have you. There's no way I'm gonna be able to do it because the plate will just blow out over the top of the bridge. Um, and the other thing that I need to bear in mind is that because I've done these quite uneven, um, I've worked, I've I had a look and they're saying that the bridge should be 15 centimetres wide. So I've actually made a mark here and a mark here and then measured 15 centimetres up and made sure that the markings that I've done and the, uh, and the arc that I've done will also be on the bank for both here and here and also on the other section that I'm making. So those are things to bear in mind. Make sure that you check and test them, um, you know, measure twice, cut once and all that. So where I'm at now is I'm looking at free handing in a archway here, which is gonna be very low. Uh, I have thought about doing two archways. I might do that. I'm just kind of playing around at the moment um, and I'll bring you back when I finish, but I just wanted to talk through these thought processes. And then when I've got one of these done, I'll use it as a template on all the other sections. So all the sections will be the same um, and then I'll cut them all out um, and we will have our archways. So I'm gonna have a think about a double arch or a single arch. 
double arch might look quite nice. I think single arch I'll have to um, freehand, so a double arch might make more sense. Um, and then we'll cut them out and I'll bring you along and show you what it looks like when they're done um, and you'll see whether I did the double or the single. But yeah, there's a couple of little bits and pieces here just to think through. Uh, but I think that it's um, I think that it's going to look good. I think that, um, that it's going to be a really cool bridge. You can see just how uh, just how big it's going to be or how flat it's going to be as well, which is nice. It means that it's uh, like I say, you can pretty much put any model on it without it falling over. But yeah, a little bit of planning ahead needed. Let's crack on with um, and get these arches in. Well, we've got these sides of the uh, bridge, uh, and as you see, I did go for the double arch. I think that's quite nice. The reason I've had to do that is I've definitely made these much bigger than they're expecting but that's cool as well. Not, Don't mind that. Um, I think they're supposed to be about half the depth of each of these tiles so just bear that in mind because what it says is that the uh, the next step for assembling the slopes is to get two sections of the uh, whatever you're using um, in my case this five millimeter um, XPS. Um, one of them should be, they both should be 15 centimeters wide one of them should be 27 centimetres long and one of them should be 10 centimetres. Now the 27 centimetre one is supposed to go and make the, f the base or the, the road bed. Now if I measure the angle from the bottom of this to the end of the bridge, it's 46 centimetres for me, not 27. So not quite twice as long, <laughs> but nearly. Um, so that's what you're looking at doing. However, whatever dimension you need is going to be from this bottom corner to up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some more of this and I'm going to cut that out to that shape. Um, I, I will get um, two sections that are going to be 15 centimetres wide by about 46 centimetres long and that will, be, that will do the bed of the road and then one that's 15 centimetres wide and 10 centimetres high. Now my measurements there are correct and that will basically go on the end here and will act as a blank and will make this a better structure. So I'm going to get that cut um, and um, yeah, get that stuck in place. Uh, what I will do, I will um, I will bring you back when I'm doing the gluing because I'll show you how I'm going to make sure it's, uh, it's secure, uh, making use of dressmakers pins and what have you, but I'll bring you along for that. So I'll get the cutting done. When I come to the gluing, uh, I'll turn the camera back on. All right, so we have the extra length cut. So this is going to be the end and this is going to be the roadway. I have scraped them both with my, all of them, with my wire brush, so that's good. So what we're now going to do is we're going to start to assemble it. So basically what's going to happen, and it's pretty obvious, but I'll just show you anyway, and then we'll, um, I'll show you how I'm going to make it secure, is this end piece will glue there, flat to the bottom and across, and the other side, the other side of the bridge will glue on that side, and then the roadway will go across the top. So what I'm going to do is... PVA glue along the edge. Okay. And then I'm actually going to do it kind of upside down how you'd think it. So I'm actually going to set this on top. And the reason why I'm going to set this on top is I have my dressmaker's pins here. And I really like using these to add strength and to hold things in place. Now you don't need to necessarily leave them in. If you don't want to leave them in, you can push them in just a little way, and then when it's dry, you can pull them back out again. But I generally leave them in because they will maintain that strength. So I'll get that done on this side, turn it over, and glue the other side on. And then when that's done, I'll glue the top of the roadway on. And I will do roughly the same thing with some pins just to hold it in place. And I know this is going to work because we're going to be wrapping cardboard around these edges and so I'll be able to definitely hide those pin heads. So I'll get that done um, and show you what it looks like when it's finished. Um, and then we'll stick it in place. It does say to stick it straight down onto the riverbank section but I'm not sure whether I'm going to and I'll explain why I might do something a bit different to the instructions. In a, when I get to it. Um, but yeah, I might, might not do that. Anyway, let's make some bridges. Oh, my bridges are made. And oh, they're looking really good. Very pleased with that. The instructions call for you to stick them down now and cover them in wallpaper and do all that stuff. 
I'm not going to do it just here, I'm going to move on to the next section. I'm going to make all of the sections and then once I've got all of the sections, all the parts done, then I'll start to glue things together. One of the things I'm concerned about is getting paint in and actually painting the river underneath the section, particularly because I've done it with two arches. And so actually accessing and painting underneath the smaller arch is going to be really, really difficult um, if I just go ahead and do it without thinking. So we're going to move on to the next thing, which is the middle section, the buttresses. So what it says is two large buttresses. Middle section of the bridge sits between two large buttress supports. Each buttress is made from two rectangles of two centimeter thick styrene measuring approximately 20 centimeters by 10 and then gluing them together, which is a bit silly when you have five centimeter polystyrene. <laughs> so if you don't have five centimeter polystyrene, obviously you can do this and glue them together and what have you, but I'm just going to make use of this because it's already the right size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out a 10 centimeter tall strip using my um, Proxom um, and then 20 centimeter uh, and split them into 20 centimeters. So that will be my two buttresses. And what it then says is mark a vertical line about one centimeter from each corner of the buttress and using a hot wire cutter, follow the lines and remove the corners to make the buttress an elongated octagon shape. So you're basically just gonna trim off the corner, like that, cut from a corner there, trim a corner there, um, and it said elongated octagon shape. So I'm gonna get that done, I'll get that cut, and what have you with the Proxon, um, and then we'll move on to the next step, which is putting a little bit of decoration on it. Okay, just a quick clip about how I'm doing the beveling or the, or the cutting off of the corners. You can see here we've got, um, I've got one that's not done yet. So first of all, what I did was I used just a knife, so a sharp knife, and it's not a terrible result, but you do get some bobbling. Then I used a hot wire cutter without a guide, and that's pretty horrendous, but don't worry, you'll find out why that's not a problem at all. And then what I did was a little bit extra effort, but it's very, very worth it, is to run masking tape down, and let's see if I can do this on camera, and you get a really nice clean cut like so, and it's worth the extra couple of minutes that it took to do the to apply the uh, masking tape accurately. You get a much much better shape. So I've done two like this with the masking, and I've got two over there without the masking, and that's because for my additional build this month, I'm going to do a middle section which is basically destroyed. So it will be. Um, passable potentially but what it could be quite nicely done is just um, it's set, like it could look like just a really really old bridge if you don't want to have these um, the, the ramps up to it you could just have a river going down the middle and those buttresses sat in there um, and the, the other thing is is it means that I can then put the all together and I will be able to have the section with the whole bridge and then another river section with uh, a destroyed bridge so I can have a really really wide river section on the table. So these ones that I've not done and I've done very very roughly they will be going towards a destroyed um, the buttress set in the middle section anyway. So uh, I'll be getting started on that um, uh, uh, very shortly on this in this build video but that's just so you know I haven't wasted that uh, I would have already had that idea. Um, so yeah but if you're wanting to do one that's neat absolutely definitely always use a guide and draw the guide in and then make use of some masking tape and then you always get a very nice clean cut. That's exactly how you want it. So there we are. So clean that up, get rid of all the rubbish and then we'll come back for the next step. Next step is to add the buttress walls. So we've got this interesting shape and what it says to do which is not working for me, so I've had to do something a bit different again because I've got a slightly different size, is to cut out uh, um, 12 rectangles of foam card about 2 centimeters by 12 centimeters. So I've cut out some 12 centimeters and some 2 centimeters, but I've had to cut a 3.5 for the middle, and you'll see what I mean in a second. So what it then says is place them side by side and join them with masking tape to make a hinge. So we're going to give that a go. So we'll stick a bit of masking tape on this one. What I probably should do, actually, before I do that, you're shouting at the screen, I'm going to rough them up with a wire brush. So uh, I will get that done and then uh, come back in a second. These are now all wire brushed nicely, so they'll actually have some sticky, something to stick to. So we're going to use a length of masking tape 
and stick in my case the one the two centimeter wide ones either side of the three and a half centimeter wide ones like that okay and then with that done what that does is it articulates as they say around the end very nicely like so so what I'll do then is I'll get some PVA glue, glue that in place, and uh, pin it as well, and then I'll do the other end, and then I'll come back in a second and show you how we're going to do this uh, this middle bit, which is probably quite obvious. We're going to cut a shape and stick it on. But yeah, let's get these ends done. And I'll do that for both of the buttresses. I've got the other buttress here as well. So you're going to end up with having, as it says, 12 bits of, um, of XPS to do three on each end. So these have glued on perfectly fine. I've just pulled the pins off one, the other one's still got the pins on. But I've realised actually what I want to do, and I'm going to do this now and it's going to delay me just by a day, is I want to put an additional little side piece on here about a centimetre wide. So I've cut some more one centimetre wide sections of the same XPS. I'm going to need to uh, take, get the uh, wire brush to go over it. And then what I'm going to do is going to glue it down here and here. And what we can see is if I bring my bridge in, that's going to be basically exactly the right width for the um, for the for the uh, row to go over the top, uh, and uh, it's going to look a little bit nicer as well. So I'm just going to do that on this. So I've cut eight of these strips, four for this one, and four for the other one. Glue them in place using PVA um, as per usual, and pin them and leave them overnight. Uh, but first of all, I need to get the wire brush out. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it's going to look nicer. It's going to delay me, like I say, but it's worth doing, I think. Um, and then the next thing, what I might actually even do tonight, the final thing I'm going to do is glue on between here and here with another of exactly the same. So that's going to clad there. So I probably will get that done as well. So that's going to be the height of this, which is 10 centimetres, I think, um, and the width of this, which I'll measure. And I'll cut four of those out and glue them on as well, uh, pin them in place and do it with PVA. So anyway, you could probably do this with a single piece and cut out the dip between, make sure it's a 15 uh, centimeters, 150 mil, uh, but I've decided to do it this way anyway. So uh, yeah, I'll uh, be back when that's all dried and look at the next step. Yes, there are three buttresses and I've definitely realized that making these rivers the same size as I did for the previous is much bigger than in the magazine because Sorry for the banging there. If we have a look at the picture in the magazine, you can see here, their bridge is, well, their river is tiny. Mine definitely needs three. So I'm gonna have three buttresses, which is gonna be pretty cool. But what I think this might do is adjust my idea for my second build, my destroyed bridge. I might make my destroyed bridge the width of just one buttress, so I can potentially add it on quite easily or, or what have you. So I might just do that instead of making the, uh, a, a water section this size, have um, uh, make some water sections that are half the width of each of these um, and make the bridge a little bit smaller. So anyway, that's a lot of words to say, oops. So what I'm having to do is make up another buttress set exactly the same as I've done for these, which I'm gonna do now, which obviously can delay me a little bit, uh, but this is working out absolutely perfectly and it's gonna look wicked. I mean, I don't mind too much. One thing I am going to say is it does say to stick down these and then do the sides and what have you. I am not going to do that. And the reason I'm not going to do that is the same reason as I've not stuck down anything yet onto the other boards. And that's because of access. So if we put like an archway here and it's all stuck down, how am I supposed to get in to paint these things? I'm not going to, am I? So what I'm going to do is, uh, is assemble... Basically, this is a bridge which will be uh, made to the right, everything will be positioned correctly, will be lift on and off, and then I will finish the bridge separately to the base, paint everything separately, glue it down, and then finish up around the bottom of where the uh, buttresses are into the water and what have you. So anyway, yeah, I am doing that a little different from the magazine also. So let's get some cutting. Let's make these this look the same as these ones. It's going to look absolutely wicked, and I'm probably going to start on the alternate build as well now that I know what I'm doing. Um, and uh, yeah, pretty, I'm, I'm happy enough. It's just, yeah, I've just made them too big, but hey, you know, big is better, isn't it? It's been a week since I've looked at this. I've had such a crazy, crazy week. That's quite a regular occurrence, as you probably tell. So what we're looking at doing now is doing the, uh, building the, um, the, the archways that go between each of these um, 
pillars or whatever I call them. So I've got my width of my uh, river section which is 49 centimeters. So we're going to have to go uh, to um, 29 and a half, 24 and a half even, apologies, 24 and a half is going to be the center. Now, and I promise I haven't measured this, I have actually put that dead center at 24 and a half. <laughs> so my, my eyeballing it has been pretty good. But what, what, if you remember what I said, I'm, I'm, what I'm going to do, or of course you remember, it's been a week for me, but it's been a second for you. Uh, I'm going to build these separately and only put them in place up to the river once I'm ready to start, once I've done painting the bridge sections and I'm ready to start assembling it all together. So I, I've, I've offered these up against the edge of the river section so they can get them the correct distance. Um, and what I'll do now is measure each of these gaps and then cut and put the archways in. So um, with that all now nicely in place, I'll do some measuring and I'll bring you back when I've got the pieces I need and talk to you about what they look like. I've got my pieces. I obviously need to make twice as many because I'm doing two archways. Uh, but what it says is measure the gap between the two buttresses, that's the word, and cut out two rectangles of foam card long enough to fit and about 12 centimeters high. That's what this is. So my gap was, um, 14 centimeters, 140 mil. So this is 14 by 12. Uh, mark the center point along the bottom edge of each piece of foam card before drawing out an archway using the same circular object from step one. Now, mine's actually not gonna be the same circular object, which might end up looking a bit odd, but I'll talk you through that in a second. Then cut that out. Then make the bed of the road bed. So this is 15 centimeters wide by 14 centimeters. So this fits on nicely on top of the buttress, uh, which is just out of shot, apologies. There we are, fits on nicely on top of the buttress um, and is also the correct width for, um, for going on top of these new arches. And then basically glue it all together. And in this, interesting enough, I've been using holding pins throughout this series and they mention it, holding pins. The foam car bridge needs to be as level as possible, which is tricky when you try to hold the whole model together as it dries. Use small pins to hold the parts in place while it glues. So you all knew that already because I told you, but it's just interesting to me that this now, that tip now appears in the modeling workshop. Anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to assemble the archways that are gonna go between these and the whole, all, all of them are gonna get glued together. So the three archways that we have here, apologies for shaky cam then, we're going to have an archway here and an archway here. Now, because I've made it slightly differently, <laughs> um, I can't have the same arches for this as um, as I do for the for the um, ramp. I'm going to make use of this, which is a yogurt pot that we get here, um, and I'm going to use the top half of this as my curve, and then have sh have straights down, so it'll be up and across and down, rather than it just being an arch because I don't think that, let me, let me move the camera again. Right, so now you can see a bit better. I'm, I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna do this. I might use the top edge because I need to remember that I have, this is, this is the wall and the, actually the, the, the road goes two centimeters, the road level goes two centimeters below the top of this wall. So it might make sense, I might actually just be able to do, um, use, use this yogurt pot um, to cut around, make a template and then copy that across to the others. I was considering using the other end and having a straight line down, but of course with where the road, um, the road bed is gonna be, that's probably not gonna work. So anyway, I'm gonna cut these arches out, I'll let you know what I end up with um, and then um, get that glued together and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So this is assembled nicely, uh, just using PVA at the moment with pins. I've put the pins in permanently, but uh, it's not that secure. There's quite a lot of risk of it breaking during gameplay. So what I'm going to do, and you'll probably guess, <laughs> I'm going to make use of the fix the silicon type sealant. And uh, I'm going to run that around the base underneath. You're not going to see it. And they'll get painted anyway. Um, basically, I'm going to run a bead along each of the joints like this. And it will just add a little bit of more structure and a little bit more sticking power to each of these joints. So we'll run a bead. I'll do most of this off camera. We'll run a bead. And then just come along and smear it in. And when that dries, that will be going nowhere. So I'll get that done on all of them. I'll do it all the way around each of the bays 
so around each of these uh, edges. Uh, it goes off quite quickly, um, so uh, we'll be back very shortly for the next step, which is um, going to be adding detail brickwork, which if you have been paying attention, I really, really hate this step. So uh, yeah, uh, the boring bit. Uh, but yeah, just going to finish it off with a bead of this silicon. Uh, it's not a bad idea, and then that should be quite strong, and I'll be able to move on to the next step. All right, so I have cut a load of cardboard here from old cereal packets, and I'm about to get stuck into the least enjoyable part of these builds, the thing that I hate the most, which is adding detail brickwork. <laughs> so uh, what I'm going to need to do is take these bits of these squares of cardboard and glue them in place around each of these corners and it is tedious. Now I'm going to try using the glue, the, um, the super hard glue because I reckon I can put a very thin smear down here and a thin smear down here and then I might be able to get away because one of the challenges I have with PVA is it doesn't go off very fast and so generally you have to glue it on and then once it's finished drying on one side then you have to bend it and glue the other and hope it stays. Now that's, the other stuff is a bit grabbier, so I'm hoping that might work. So I'll report back on that, see if it works. If it doesn't, this is just gonna take me days because yeah, I need to do all of the bridge. And I need to do around the arches and along there. Yeah, I'm just gonna be gluing on cardboard for days. So I'm actually thinking that what I'm gonna do is put a film on tonight and uh, just sit and watch a film and glue on and just just do that. Uh, I also need to get started on my alternative build. I've thought about it a lot, I know what I'm gonna do. Um, so I'll try to get to that as well. This will, this will be running in the background. So hopefully the next clip you see will be the alternative build. Um, but yeah, life is busy as it always is. So I haven't had time to, but hopefully I will. Uh, anyway, enough rambling, let's get back to it. I'm just getting to the end of this process and I thought I'd actually just film a little bit to show you how I'm doing it because this, glue is working really really well for me. So I've got gloves on because it also dries very fast onto your fingers. Uh, it's got a really good grab. So what I do is I put a very little bit around just as little tub tabs here. I've probably even put too much. You don't need very much because it spreads well. Um, and then when you've got your uh, glue uh, like that then you can come along as you can see I've got my uh, got my gloves on. I did it without gloves at first and it's just horrible to clean off. And this has actually meant that I've actually done pretty much all of the all of this application of cardboard, which normally takes me days with PVA. And I've just done it this evening in about half an hour or so. So you literally just spread it around like this, but get it nice and thin. There we are. And then I've got my box of cut up cardboard. And what I'm doing is I'm coming along and putting it in place. And it is as simple as that. And that has been, that has dried. I did a test last night. It's dried very, very nicely. So as I say, I've just cracked through and done everything else. All of them i have done the main bridge as well. All the corners, everything, all the stuff that is such a pain and you have to wait so long for it to dry. I've just been able to do it in one session, so even in terms of, like the other side of this is done, look, there we are, um, and I can even turn it over, it's so, it gets such good grab that I'm able to work much faster and much more efficiently. So there we are, I'm actually also running out of that stuff, <laughs> so I have to buy some more, um, but yeah, really, really good. So there we are, that's how I'm getting it done, I'll have to throw these gloves away once I've finished, which will be in a minute or so, and then... Uh, then, then this build will be on to painting and actually no, doing the doing the ro road is the next section, doing the road bed. So yeah, but before that, I'm going to make a start on the advanced build as I promised, and uh, advanced build, alternative build. There isn't an advanced build this month. Um, so yeah, that's how quick this is. Using a slightly different style of glue. So far is. Seem like a good decision. The only problem I've got with this is it, I do think that it maybe doesn't take paint as well, so I might gain time on this, but have to do multiple coats of paint, but I prefer painting. <laughs> so, there we are, done. That's how quick that is. So, 
It's nice to try new techniques. There, yeah, all done. So here we are, I've done the alternative build, which I'm doing as a very, very damaged bridge. You can see that I've already broken off some pieces before gluing on, actually, I did that before. And I actually also used the glue that I've been really enjoying to do all of the gluing, no PVA and no pins. And that has been much more successful and much, a much better result, which is good. So the plan now is to hack away at this a little bit more and cause some more damage to it. So I've got a knife here, I'm going to reach over. And what I'm going to be doing is literally coming in, carving out sections to cause damage. Like that. <laughs> so it's going to be quite fun. Um, and quite noisy. So I probably won't film it all, but you get the idea. Um, one thing I am going to try to do is keep this at least continuous in, uh, as continuous as I can so I'm going to cut a hole here and cut a hole here and cut a hole here but I want it to obviously keep the, the um, integrity because this is holding the whole thing together so I don't want to totally take it away and split it in half that's not the idea um, though um, I might I change my mind when I come to glue it down uh, because that could actually work if it's glued to the base thinking about it so I might I might split it entirely but for now um, I don't want this to be floppy um, and if I split it entirely I'll need to put some support in and, and what have you and, and yeah that, that probably will be too much of a pain so yeah I'm gonna hack away make some damage cut away from the cladding cut away as you can see here um, probably do it as well a little bit more jaggedy than that so it looks a bit less smoothly cut um, and then when that's done then uh, we'll be ready for putting down the, uh, um, the the road surface, which I'm really looking forward to because I've actually found some wallpaper. <laughs> hey, so and that'll be being done for this build and also for the ramps and also for the main bridge. So they'll all be and then everything will be in the same in the same place. Of course, once I've finished cutting this, I'll have to do the cardboard work on this as well. But yeah, everything will be at the same place basically. So I will get this hacked at. And then uh, you'll see it next when we're about to do the road surface. So the next step is to do the road bed. And I am very excited because I finally found some wallpaper, which is pretty much nearly what I need. <laughs> so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making use of this central strip here. As you can see, it's, pretty, it's almost exactly the right width for these roads. Uh, it will mean there will be some waste, but I won't throw it away, I might be able to make use of it. And I'll be gluing that down across all of this. So this is just one ramp that I've got here, but I've also got the other ramp, I've got the bridge, and I've got the damaged bridge as well, that I'll be wrapping, the, wrapping in those. And actually, let me quickly show you. <laughs> Here's the damaged bridge, I've hacked away at it, I've put holes in it, I've stuck on all of the uh, cardboard, so that's really ready for the, uh, for the same, same stage, so it's really ready for the roads. So the width, the length of this, um, what I'll be doing is I'll be cutting out sections uh, that are the correct length, gluing them down with PVA, and then leaving it for a day or two to dry fully. Uh, so I've got a 46 centimetre run there. So I need to get 46 centimetres out of this, cut that section out, and then glue it in place. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get that cut. I won't do that on camera because it's just going to be me kind of like juggling things. And then once I've got a length, I'll bring, a, bring the camera back and show you how I'm going to go about gluing it down and clamping it and making sure that it doesn't, uh, doesn't rise or lift or anything like that. Because I can't put weights on it because this is not strong enough to hold weight. So I need to be a little bit more intelligent and smart and I have some plans. <clears throat> so anyway, I'll get that cut and I'll bring you back when I'm ready to glue. Okay, so I've cut out my length of the... Um, wallpaper. It's not the tidiest of cuts, there's a few places where it pulled, but I had to trim that down, just a couple of very very thin slices off the side to get it to exactly match, but you can see that fits really nicely. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put PVA over the base of this, so I'll do that with a water brush with some water on it. So let me get that done. So there we are, we have some a good smear of PVA over the top of that now. So what I'll now do is I will get the paper 
and lay it down over the top, like that. And then just carefully smooth it down so it's all smooth. Now that's adhering really nicely, but I want to make sure it stays adhering really nicely. So I will make use of, you guessed it, some clamps to hold that in place, hopefully. It may not be big enough, I might need to use my other clamps. But I'm going to clamp that down along each of the edges. I cannot weight it because of the how flimsy the whole thing is. So I can at very least put the clamps on now at the bottom and the top. And once this is dry, then I will trim off the excess top and bottom. So uh, I've deliberately left an overhang at both ends. There we are. So let's just make sure, let's clamp that. You can see that it is already starting to lift a little bit. So we definitely want to make sure that it doesn't end up being too bubbly. Of course, in one sense it doesn't matter because I'm going to paint it and put gravel on it and all that sort of good stuff There's, uh, to, to add weathering. But still, I'd rather it wasn't all that. I'd rather it wasn't really, really badly warped. So there we are. So I'm going to get some other clamps, clamp that down and then uh, I'll do the rest of them and I'll bring you back when it's all dry and when I'm about to start painting and I'll show you what clamps I end up with because it looks like I'm going to be faffing about with this for a little while uh, and I'll show you what I end up with when it's done. That was so difficult that I've decided to only do one with this and I'm really not very pleased with how it's turned out. It's very wrinkled and it's, and it's not glued down very nicely. So a big learning curve here and I think I know what would have improved this and how this could have worked better if I'd have glued down this wallpaper before assembling anything. So work out how long your ramp's going to be and how long you're going to need to go across your, um, your bridges. Uh, though the bridges I can probably weight down better, but certainly your ramps, work out how long they're going to be. And then glue and make sure everything is smooth. You can see there's some really bad wrinkles in that. Uh, I mean, I'll, it'll be okay. There we are. That's you can really see there. It will be okay. I'll be able to get get by. I'm sure. Uh, I'm going to paint it and uh, put gravel and make it a little bit dirtied up, so I can get away with it. But yeah, if you're following along with this and you haven't started building yet, top tip: put your um, don't, put this on so that you can weight it down and make sure it doesn't go dry wrinkled like that. So anyway. Lesson learned, I'm going to carry on, I'm going to do the rest of these uh, pieces, which I've not done anything yet, try to do them a little bit better, try to avoid that effect, hopefully, and if I can, I'll let you know how I do it, but otherwise, yeah, it's just, it's just what it is, um, it'll look good, I'm sure it'll be fine when I've done, um, but yeah, let's get this finished off. And here we are, that's actually worked out okay, I ended up using the white glue, the thing that I'm using everywhere now. Um, it's had a much better res result than the PVA, it just grabs more um, and you can see that I've managed to get the little infills done. So what I'm going to do now, I've done it on this and I'm going to have to do it on the rest. I need to cut the ends off so they're smooth and then I'm going to make use of some PVA and some gravel and some of the other gravel that I've made up for the build last month. So little plumps of, of uh, XPS and what have you and I'm just going to put piles of gravel um, in some of the gaps, mainly on this one, but I'm going to put a few on here because it is still a wrecked city, isn't it? And I might actually cut out some of the sides and make a little bit more damage on some of these. But I'm just going to put a few little bits and pieces of gravel all over the place and then we can go to painting. And painting is going to involve um, <clears throat> black paint over everything and then texture put, texturing on the sides. So I will get the gravel done and then show you that and then I will do the painting um, and show you that. So the next thing we'll do is put in the gravel on. Let's uh, let's get materials together and get started. So here we are. This is going to have the most rubble obviously but it's going to be a couple of stage process but first of all basically we're just going to put some neat PVA in and as you see this is um, bits of XPS and other larger lumps. I'm not going to go too crazy because I don't want to make this impassable. 
but I do want it to be have quite a good texture. So what I'll do is I'll build up areas like that. If I zoom that in a bit, you can see that a bit better. And then once I've got a bit of stuff on that, I'm going to get my number three builder sand. which is a good size for this, I think. And I'm just gonna come along and put some gravel in place, as you can see. And again, I'm using the knee and I'm pushing it in because I don't want it to be too high. I just want it to be there. There we are. So there's a nice little pile of, of gravel. Once that's dried, I can come along with black paint and then dry powder, brush it and what have you, and that will look really nice. So I'm gonna continue doing this sort of thing around all these broken parts. And I'm also gonna put a couple on some of the other sections, so on the other non-damaged bridge and on the ramps. And yeah, um, get that done. When that's done, I'll show what it looks like. Our next stage is to paint the sides, and put the sand on, wait for that to dry, and then paint it again, doing it with black paint. So this is the textured paint stage. I should add that Rosie is outraged that her baby uh, bath is covered in paint. She saw it the other day and she was most put out. <laughs> Oops. So anyway, so what we're going to do is we paint the watered down PVA uh, and house paint mix and with a dash of washing up liquid or dish soap if you're American. Paint that on relatively liberally but you don't have to have it too thick. So I'll just do half of that and then literally this is builder's sand that I've sa sifted to be thin and you just do that and then let it fall straight off and there we are you can see once you dry brush you will be able to see these these stones so I know they look like they've disappeared but they haven't totally so I've got to do that on everything uh, I'll also do the inside walls um, and um, what I'll do as well is I'll put paint over the top of the, wall, of the wallpaper as well but I'll do the sand first, the texture first, shake that off and then I'll paint the, do the paint. But this will take me a couple of applications because as you can see you need to touch it so I might have to wait um, and to come back to it um, a little bit later when it's dried to finish it off. But I get all of this done across all of the pieces I've built uh, and then we'll have a look actually at the, uh, at the banks as well. So that's probably the next thing I'll do is start on the banks. So yeah, let's get this uh, texture down. So let's have a look at these banks. This is actually going to be very similar to what I've just been doing on the bridge. I'm going to be painting black across all of the bank area and putting sand on. Um, but what I'm going to do first, actually, <laughs> which I've just thought, is I'm just going to do a couple of uh, little piles of gravel and detritus just either side, um, which I will put on now, and then I will do the black paint and the sand after that. Uh, so actually, I'm not going to necessarily need to have the bath out, so I'll change myself up, get some glue, put some uh, detritus on in exactly the same way as you just saw me doing on the bridge so I won't film that and then what I'll do is I'll paint black and put sand over it and that will then mean that I can dry brush the brown so the next step I'll do after this will be after all that's done and I'm ready to come on with the dry brushing because that's a bit of a of an interesting technique that I want to kind of shout out a little bit um, painting and doing everything as a black undercoat and then coming along and dry brushing on your soil color is a really really cool way of getting good effect so so yeah I'm gonna get out my um, my larger rocks and uh, bits of broken up XPS, glue a couple of piles on. When that's dried, it doesn't take long, I'll come along and do the sand. So yeah, cracking on with this, really excited um, to get this, uh, get this finished. I'm really not, not far off now. So I've been staring at these arches and thinking and thinking, and I probably should have done this before, because it's gonna require a little bit of rework, but I am happy to, to go the extra step, because I don't like the way these are hollow you can see into them from this angle and see that there's nothing there it doesn't look right there's an arch but it's actually hollow underneath so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this cardboard this 
actually came out of a poster frame as you can see so it's just like some thinnish cardboard it's not paper it's a bit thicker than paper but not thick as as cardboard which makes it bendable and I'm going to glue this in here and then I will do the black paint and sand trick on that as well and that then will just finish it off and I might even glue a few bits of uh, cardboard to give bricks which is a bit crazy because I hate doing that so I might not but we'll see so yeah so all that's going to involve is basically measuring the correct um, dimensions to cut it so I will measure the width, <coughs> excuse me, I'll measure the width and cut a strip along there like that and then offer that in and mark up where each of the edges are, draw a line across and then move along and I am going to do all of the bridges, so all of the arches, so I'm going to do underneath this arch as well and underneath this arch and then the other ramp and then also, and this is where it gets interesting, I'm going to try and do underneath the main bridge uh, so the damaged bridge, even not the main bridge, uh, I'm looking at the main bridge, the damaged bridge, which uh, which is going to be interesting because that's got holes in it. So I'm going to be looking at basically trying to uh, fill those holes. I might end up getting some uh, modelling compound and filling in the sides uh, once the arch is in and then cut, cut through and what have you. So uh, I'll bring you along for that because that's going to be a little more interesting. But I'm going to get the rest, I'll get the first bits done. Um, so, uh, um, and I'll show you what it looks like before I start painting and then we'll work together probably more closely on the damaged bridge. But this is an additional step obviously that's not in the magazines, so it's extra bonus for you. So yeah, let's get cracking. So what I've got is, I've measured up, it's 16 centimetres exactly across, which is which is easy enough. And I've marked on the card 16 centimetres at each end. And what I'm now going to do is come along with my sharp knife and my safety ruler and let's get that cut out. So it's the best way to cut is with any material. Don't try and pull it, don't try and force it. Just draw the knife through and if your knife is nice and sharp it will cut pretty quickly and you'll end up with a nice clean cut. There we are. The most important tool in your toolbox as a hobbyist or toolkit, bang, as a hobbyist, is your safety ruler. And they, they really are wonderful. So now that I've cut that, let's move the camera over a little bit. What we're going to do is offer that up here. Sure it's relatively tight it's not going to be perfect just because I should have done this before before it was all assembled I should have made these but it'll be fine it'll be okay it'll be better than nothing anyway and then what we'll do is we'll mark roughly where to cut on each upright there we are and then cut between those two lines, just here, Let's move the camera again. This is a bit, bit old school footage here. I just realized I haven't really been showing how I do things very really easily, just been saying what. And uh, I think it's not quite nice sometimes to see the techniques like, don't do that. Make sure that you actually are, have your item that you're cutting securely held. There we are. So multiple gentle draws and that's done and now I'm going to get my glue which I'm going to use the stuff that I'm loving so much which is my moment fix extreme and what we'll do move the camera again once more last time for this clip honest <laughs> What I'll do is I will run the bead along here. There we are, so I've got a bead along each of the edges of the arches. And now we hope that this works. Because I haven't tried this. Actually, what I'm going to do is very quickly just smear it on a bit 
like that just so it's actually adhered a little bit to the arch I should really be wearing gloves for this it makes it a lot easier if you do because it's very sticky and it's very annoying to get off once you stop doing this but uh, so for the next ones I will be wearing gloves and I am gonna have to repaint because this is getting glue which is white but anyway yes I should be wearing gloves have to wash my hands so what we'll do now is we come along and fix it at the top and I might actually get myself a pin or two and pin that in place so again should have done that before I went near the glue but never mind this is how I normally work I do something and I work out while I'm doing it how to do it better and the next time around I learn and I do the next I do it better again and then I learn something else the next time I try and do something and I learn again so always learning me and I always like hearing comments from you guys as well so don't be shy if you're watching this going god why didn't you do this what about this as a technique then don't be shy do do say so anyway we're going to press that in And there we are, we have it. I think that's worked. So I'll put a couple more pins through at the top here um, and then I'm gonna move on and do the next one. But I am gonna put gloves on because my hands are now covered in glue and that's nasty and it's gonna be horrible to clear off. So I'll get this done and, and then the next bay and then I'll do the uh, two other um, ramps. And then when I come to do the broken bridge, I'll bring it back again and show you how I'm gonna plan on doing that. But I think that's gonna work. And it's gonna look quite nice, I reckon. Quite pleased with that, cool. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut out some holes in the arch which is glued on very successfully actually as it happens. It's worked really really well that. Uh, so these holes are going to be cut out through these top holes and it will make a bit of noise so I'll probably put some music on or whatever um, while I'm doing it. Um, and um, yeah so I'll just be cutting out through the, through the gaps to make a hole so there will be places where you'll be able to see right the way through. But I'm not going to try to necessarily follow the shape because, well, I just don't want to. Not on all of them anyway. I want to be able to sculpt it a little bit with some uh, bottling compounds. So let's get this cut out and then we'll see what it looks like. I just nicked myself a little bit. A little bit of blood. Only a touch. So there we are. A little bit of blood because I nicked myself. Um, very sharp laid that just caught the, caught the tip of my finger uh, but what you can see there is we have holes that go right through so this one I've done big this one smaller and that one tiny so the next step is going to be to get some modeling compound and what I will do is I will f I'll push it in around the edges I will attempt to fill in the gaps um, and when that's done then I will be able to put the sand and the paint on the bottom which I've already done on all the other ones I'm just waiting on doing on this one so I'll go and mix myself up some modeling compound and I'll bring it back and we'll have a look at how I'm going to go about filling in these gaps. There is going to be some repainting required because obviously I'm not going to be able to avoid getting white up here. Uh, so I might have to repaint. But uh, I still think it's going to look really, really cool. I'm pretty happy with how this one's turning out. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really happy with adding the, um, that I've added that under arch. Uh, well, I think that's really, really improved it. So that little nick has just bled constantly for the past 10 minutes and I've given up and I've got myself a, uh, a plaster. <laughs> because um, it turned out to be a bit deeper than I realised but that's that's how it is so what I've got here is a little bit of a um, little bit bloody uh, modelling compound from Geek Gaming Luke and uh, so I'll mix that up I'll probably need to make multiple batches because I don't want to mix too much because I want to take my time I don't want to feel rushed because I've got a load going off in my uh, in my mixer this is generally about the consistency I go for. I have no idea what the uh, what the percentages are, how, what the uh, ratios, even so, the ratios are. But I'm going to mix this better than I normally do because I really want to be able to shape it and encourage it into place. I'm normally a little bit lazier. So there we are, that's, that's mixed. 
So what we'll do is zoom the camera in a bit more, move it around a little bit. There we are. So that's the shapes that we want to try and fill. And you can see this has already got some um, some filling in because obviously it's got the uh, the expanded polystyrene. And I might try to cover that a little bit as well because it's a bit bobbly, but obvious. But this is not going to be the easiest task in the world to do, but it's definitely going to be worth it. So what we're going to try and do is fill, like I say, fill around the outside, around the sides of the gaps. It's going to need to work from the top and from the bottom and shove it in around so I can then come along and do my magic with my black paint and sand and it will look like a hole right the way through a thick stone um, thick stone bridge that is in bad need of repair right my battery is just flashing at me on my camera so i'm going to have to change the battery but you've seen enough i'm just going to carry on with that um, and when i've done i'll bring it back and show what it looks like Ah, oh, it's done. That was surprisingly fun and easy, and I mixed up too much after all that. I've got all that left over, so I'm trying to work out what to do with it. So I don't like waste, so I'm going to try and work something that at least to make it useful. Don't know what. But yeah, that's uh, that's done. So we've got some nice holes throughout, and we've got some that go right the way through, and we've got a really good, solid arch underneath as well. So I'm going to let that go off overnight, um, and then tomorrow I'll turn it over and I'll do the um i'll do the sand you can see there's a couple of bits bowing and there's some lumps but i actually quite like that because it makes it look a little bit more uneven <laughs> and damaged so yeah so i'll let that dry now and uh, it's got a bit of weight to it as well and then it'll be painting and then we'll be on to painting the river and the water which i'll probably do next which is uh which is going to be a lot of fun that's a very quick process um and uh, then we're pretty much done for the build so it's been really fun this month i've really enjoyed this and i hope you've enjoyed watching a couple of interesting experiments and new techniques and i always enjoy that that's all dried now so what we're going to do is i'm going to apply the sand and black paint so this isn't really anything particularly new but i thought i'd show you anyway what i'm doing is painting on the terrain paint mix which is pva house paint water and washing up liquid or dish soap depending on if you're american or not uh, so yes yeah, so i'll paint that on quite thin now as i've been doing this and one of the reasons why i'm doing this clip i've been thinking someone's going to be staring at this video going why aren't you using sandpaper which is a very good question. So if that was you, well done. However, what I've discovered in my time of using sandpaper, and I have used it before, is it just doesn't take paint or colour very well. How they stick the sand to the paper repels things, which is a good idea really, because you don't want it to pick up paint if you're sanding paint. <laughs> you want it to easily like shake off and get out of the teeth and what have you. But for this, issue that what we're trying to do you obviously do want it to stick so it just doesn't work as well so that's why that's why i don't use sandpaper i thought i'd make that clear so we've got paint on that we've got our bucket full of sifted sand and it is as simple as we throw the sand on it really is an agricultural process and move it all around to coat everything and there you are, you have your sand in place. So what I'll do now is empty the sand out of this bath <laughs> and I'll do exactly the same thing, paint and put sand over the top of these and then let that to dry. And then it'll be a case of dry brushing and we're done. Yes! So what we're gonna do now is we're going to do the water and I have to do this on these open water towels and also on the other two towels that are uh, gonna be with the bank. But I'll do just a bit on camera. I've done this before. You can see a much more extensive version of this in other videos if you want. But basically what, what I do is I mix blue and green together to get a really nice dark color like that. And then start to, and it's a very, 
kind of crazy processes. I don't really try and think about it. It does go through quite a bit of paint. I'm probably going to need to put more paint out. But your water is not all the same colour, obviously. You'll know that, anyone that's seen a, a river. So you're looking at putting swirls of darker and lighter and whatever. And particularly for this, which is the middle of the river, is going to probably be a bit darker. So I might even come along with a bit of brown in a bit and really darken up that centre. So I've not got nearly enough paint. So I've uh, got quite a lot to do. Uh, that's unusual. I normally put far too much out. I'm going to run out of that blue is empty as well. So I run out of that. So let's get a different, another one of blue. Put that on. There we are. So yeah, so you literally wet, wet palette, wet mixing, blending it alive on the plate to get the colour that you're looking for, which is like that, a nice green. And then you can make it a little bit more interesting, as I say, by bringing in a lighter green if you want to, or leaving some swirls of blue. And you're just trying to get it in all the same colour all the, all the time. So now I'm going to get that done. Um, it will take me a little while, but not too long. As you can see, it's relatively quick. You will also notice that these tiles are warping, and I want to address that now. I'm going to do something in a different video about these tiles and all the tiles I've got for this river, because I've come up with an idea. It's out of scope for this video. It'll be too much work, and uh, I want to do it to more than just this tile, like a tile storage system type thing, because yeah i can see these these tiles being really useful as i go forward in wanting to do more more gaming so i will be resolving the the warp in another video so don't worry about that so yeah we're just doing something crazy and random doing all greens might mix in some brown like i say in a bit to make it a bit darker in the middle but yeah just going for swells so I'll get that done and uh, be back next to show you uh, how I'm going to do the uh, banks and the ground around the banks. Next step is to dry brush and paint the rest of these, uh, all of these with a dark grey and then with a lighter grey. So the dark grey is going to be quite heavy. Um, it's not going to really be a dry brush as such, but it's not going to be wanting to completely remove all the black that you've got on there because shadows are good so hopefully i won't do what i just did there and destroy too much of the texture i've added but you can see that you can get the texture out of that wallpaper which is really nice to see i was a little bit worried that it wouldn't really come through but because this is not wanted to be a dry brush i don't really mind i'll bring that out and all of that texture out with the lighter gray when i come along with that or maybe even with the white, because this is for the white city, or the old white city. So yeah, I'll get this done on all the models. It's gonna take a while, there's quite a lot to do actually. I not bother running the camera for all of it. All I'm doing here is applying this darker gray just to get the underneath color right. And then I'll come along with, with lighter and lighter colors doing lighter and lighter dry brushes. This one is a very heavy one. So I'll get that done, I'll bring you back when I come to the next colour and just show you how I do that. Um, and we're nearly done with this. So the first grey is on, it looks pretty good. So what I'm now going to do is do a little bit more of a traditional dry brush with a lighter grey, which is actually going to take a little bit longer because you have to pay a bit more attention and be a bit more careful. But what this is going to do is bring out those, um, the texture on the wallpaper particularly, and also just add highlights across everything else. So this will take a little bit longer to do. It hopefully will work. And uh, after I've done this, then I'll come back with a white highlight, with a white one, and do an even lighter brush. But all I'm doing is just taking most of the paint off on a, kitchen roll or towel just to my just down here and actually while you're doing this I can't actually see much difference but as it dries 
you'll see more and more difference as it dries. So it's one of those things, a fact of faith. So hopefully my faith will, will be rewarded. And uh, the fact that I can't really see much difference now, when I come back to this in an hour or so, I'll be able to see quite a big difference once it's dried. So that's what I'm gonna do. Do that across all of them again. I want them all to be roughly the same color, and the same response, uh, the same result. So yeah, I'm just gonna do that. Um, hopefully that'll bring the texture out quite nicely. We've got a little bit more dry brushing to do now, and that's, this time we're gonna be working on the banks of the lake, or the river, or whatever. So I've got the same greys that I've used on the, um, on the bridge, on the bridge, and I'm gonna come along and do a heavy dry brush over the top of all of the stone areas, or the rocks, with the dark grey, and then I will do a lighter dry brush in the same way using the lighter grey. Now I don't have to be too accurate on this because I'm going to be coming over with brown in a bit which will cover over the top of this. So it doesn't matter if it's a bit smeary as you can see. And also remember that the bridge is actually going to be coming in as well so we will be covering over some of this. So that's that's that, that's the uh, dark grey done. Now while that's drying, which won't take very long, what I'll do is I'll open up this, this paint pot here, which is my brown, my chocolate brown, which is what I use to make my terrain paint that I use so often. Um, and what we're gonna do here, and it's gonna be a little bit tough because my brush is a bit wet, but this is a really nice technique for getting a really nice effect of soil on top of a brown, on top of a black base. So you come along and we will dry brush around the edges and even over some of the, bra some of the rocks. And it gives a good, a good finish as you can see. And it's really quick as you can also see. So there we are. That is, that is the soil done. So now, and obviously I'll be doing the, this on the other bank as well. Now what we want to do is a much lighter dry brush of the gray over the top of the, of this, um, of the, of the soil, of the stone areas. If I could speak, that'd be helpful, wouldn't it? There we are. And that will just highlight them, bring them out a little bit more, and you don't need to do much more than that. So there we are. That is how quick it is <laughs> to do the banks. So I'll do the other one, and then what we're gonna do, I'll come along, I'll let that dry, and then we'll need to put the grass on. However, before I put the grass on, I'm actually gonna glue things in place. So I'll do the other side, and then we're gonna start to stick the bridges on, and then we're gonna do the varnish and the grass. So. Uh, I will, uh, I will I'll do the other bank and then bring you along for the next step. There we are, there's the whole thing. So uh, what I'm going to do now is glue this down um, and I'm probably going to make use of um, PVA for that. Um, that's the plan anyway. Um, so I'll, I'll just set it in place like this, glue it down and leave it because I'm, um, I'm going to be stopping soon. Um, yeah, pretty pleased with how that's looking. There's a couple of mistakes. Uh, I can immediately see that I've made the this too high. Um, I should have factored in the width of the road, road bed, made the upright here a little bit shorter based on the road bed because there's a step. But you know, you live and learn. I could always cut off across here but I'm not going to do that. It's just going to be how it is. Um, but everything else is really good. I'm really, really pleased. I think it looks wicked. Um, and I'm really looking forward to getting the, these actually finished off. So once this is all dried and glued in place, then I can do the grass and I will be building up around the base of the uprights, just doing some weeds and then what have you. And then once that's done, I can put the, the varnish on. So yeah, PVA and leave it. So I'll get that done. I'll bring you on for the next step shortly. 
First of all, apologies if the drilling is noisy. I've got the workmen outside working away, and they're gonna be drilling for ages. And I've only got a few minutes now before I start work, so uh, I'm filming anyway. So we get into the fun bit now. What I'm gonna be doing, I hope it's gonna be fun anyway. What I'm gonna be doing is I have these um, cut up paint bristles, and I am going to stick them in place. Now my plan is to basically put some. I've dropped it, and I shouldn't have done. Put some paint, or put paint some glue on. Uh, along the edge of the wall and uh, the base of uh, the base of it, so like this, and then I will actually press the bristles into the paint, so they'll be stuck. Not just oh, I'm being clumsy this morning. They'll be stuck not just into the down in the water, but I'll also press them up against the the wall to make it so they're growing up the wall. Now this is, as I say, it could be a bit difficult. Hopefully it won't be. I want them to be quite spread out. I don't want to be too clumped. I'm not looking for clumps here. I'm looking for a growth of, um, of reeds that are going up the wall. So I've made a bit of a mess of that, uh, but it will work out in the end. I think the reason it made a mess is I put them down and I shouldn't have put them down. I should have kept them in my hand. So what we'll do is we'll cut again, cut the next batch. Yeah. And without putting them down, I'll press them in place. There we are. That'll be easier. So yeah, this could take some time. I'm just gonna do a bit of time, but a little bit of time through the day if I get a chance, if work allows. And what we'll end up with is quite a nice, kind of like reedy look. And we'll probably need to come along with some more glue after that this this has dried and apply some more just to make it a bit more secure. But yeah, could take some time to do this but I quite strongly want this. I'm going to do this on all of the uprights at the base of all of the towers and then I will do, after I've done that, I'll do the next thing which is going to be some stones at the base of the towers. So let's see if this turns out to not be so annoying and if I manage to get this done or if I give up in frustration which is also a, an option. As you can see, got a nice little mess of rushes at the base of that, and that's exactly how it would look in real life. And what I'll be doing as well is putting some stones and what have you, maybe some, uh, I'll paint some rocks up, um, which I can also put around here, look like blocks that have fallen out because this is the damaged one. So I might even put some in underneath as well. Uh, but yeah, let's just get this detailed, and then I'll be, for the final step, is gonna be the, um, gonna be the varnish. So yeah, get in there. Oh, the weeds, or reeds, or whatever, have dried nearly. I'm now suddenly in a rush to finish this, which is also a shame. And what I'm going to do is going to come along with some watered down PVA, the uh, the terrain glue as I call it, and I'm going to put some in just around the bases of these uprights, and I'll also do it on the banks. And I'm going to put some gravel in. Now I might try to paint this gravel. I'll see how it looks once it's in. But I also might just leave it in place. And this is, you see this a lot around the base of, tr of, of bridges that even if they built them on, a, on, a, on like a, with quite deep underwater, it still gathers in the current, it gathers uh, soil and dirt and what have you and turns around the base of these into a little bit of a kind of island, a semi-island type thing. So you can see how quick that's going to be. I'm not going to be doing much more to this now. I need to finish these up and um, they're looking really good. I'm really, really pleased with them. Um, what I might end up doing is coming along and spraying with some alcohol and then dropping some more glue on top. But I'll get this um, get this all done around all of the bases of all of the um, of the banks. Uh, sorry, of, of all of the bridge, um, and then think banks on the on the brain. Let's pull this one over here, 
undo this one because this is going to be slightly different. So just lift that in. There we are. That was a never. You never noticed the transition then, did you? So this I'm going to come along and actually put some along the bottom of the bridge here on the bank and I will have to paint this after put some black on it and then dry brush it grey again. Um, this is just to bed that transition in a little bit. So those are the two things I'm going to do now. Um, these as I say I'll have to come along with some black paint um, and then some grey paint but that won't take very long to do. And then the final step is going to be, or two more steps to do, is going to be grass on uh, scattered loosely on the on the mud, and then varnish on the actual river, and then we are done. So yeah, I will bring you back when I get to the next step, which will be doing the grass, and then the varnish will be the last step. So yeah, nearly there. So the stones have dried on initially. What I'm doing now, this is the last of the PVA to be applied. I've done all the others. So I'm putting PVA on the stones that are in the water. And then what I'll do once that's done is I will add my, you can see that goes on quite nicely. I will now add my scenic glue, the black, which is what I used everywhere else on the build. And I'll do exactly the same thing and apply it over the top of the stones that are at the edge of the build of the uh, bridge. And the reason why I'm doing that is so that I can then come along and dry brush those and turn them into a little bit more um, in keeping with the rest of the of the build, the rest of the stones on this side of the build. So uh, yeah, when that's dried, what I'll do is grass and then the last thing is going to be the varnish. So we really are getting very close to this being finished now. Um, just got to do, as you can see, I have done the PVA on this side already so I've just got to do black paint you can see it's pretty well stuck down some of it's moving a little bit I piled it up quite high I did expect this I had a thought I think I mentioned it in the previous clip that I might come along with alcohol but I haven't needed to which is good because alcohol might have caused some of the other paint that I've done to run and what have you so I've been able to just dump this on like this should glue them all nicely in place and then the dry brushing. So, yeah, really pleased with how this is looking. I think this is a, a really, going to be a really nice, awesome bit of terrain to play on, and it looks great. So, I'll let that dry, and I'll bring you back for the next step shortly. Now we've reached the final stage of this build, which is putting boat varnish or yacht varnish all over the river, which is stinky, but it gives a really nice, glossy finish. You don't want to put it on too thick that's too thick because it will uh, it will go green if it's or yellow if it's on too thick um, I'm using a very old brush here which might actually not end up be the right thing to do this is one that I uh, that I use as a as a rough brush I might get a better brush but anyway yeah this is literally yacht and lac which means yacht varnish and uh, that's what I use to do these to do these river sections. So yeah, let's get a another old brush that's slightly less hard. <laughs> there we are. That will allow me to spread it around a bit better. It's another one that's very nearly end of life. Oh, don't want to get it on my, uh, don't want to get it over the edge. So yeah, this will take me a little while as you can see, but once this is done and dried, which does take 24 hours to completely go off so I'm going to put these they're a bit smelly like I've said I'm going to put them in a different room and uh, let them let them go off then uh, then we'll do the wrap up so I won't, I won't bother filming all of it that's what I'm going to do for the next 20 minutes or so probably at least 20 minutes to do all of them yeah cool fun build this really like how it looks and uh, there's going to be a follow-up to this video, which I'll explain in the outro. But there will be a follow-up to this video coming out very shortly after this one. Hopefully, hopefully very shortly. <laughs> That's the plan anyway. To uh, deal with what you can see there, which is, it's, uh, well I can't see because I'm just off camera. But it's a little bit, um, it's 
a little bit warped as you can see there so I will be dealing with that and that will be a separate video I'm not going to do that as part of this there's no no need to make this even longer than it is but hopefully that will help if you've made the same mistake as I have here so there we are that's a little bit of it done I'll see you in a minute Well, there we are that was a really fun build a longer video than I expected it to be but then I did quite a couple of extra bits that added some time so making two bridges an additional bridge and then putting the underneath of the bridge in place I think has made a big difference certainly while I was just now painting the varnish on for the rivers it was really really nice to be able to see and actually see a reflection and not have a hole and hollow or a hole and it not look unnatural that was a really nice little addition and I hope that those give you some ideas of how you might be able to do some of your own terrain because yeah, I mean, these techniques can be used for any number of different uh, different things, not just for Middle Earth, of course. Now, I mentioned as well that there is going to be a follow-up video, uh, and uh, when you watch this, uh, when it's first published, of course, that might have been done, uh, but if you watch this later on, then I'll attempt to remember to link it somewhere around here. Uh, and I'm going to deal with the warp, but not just on these tiles that I've made now. I have made those uh, river lake side and lake tiles and an island and what have you I've made those for previous videos that are in this playlist actually uh, and they're all a bit warped and they're all a bit difficult to store and I've come up with an idea which I want to try and hopefully it's going to work uh, and if it does work then I'm going to see going to start to see this spreading throughout a lot of my videos where I'm going to make tiles that actually are able to um, stack properly taking inspiration from Sarissa and their train tile system which is amazing if you haven't seen that go and, go and check it out it's brilliant but by taking inspiration from them I'm going to make some storage and I'm going to make these tiles not be warped but that's for another video let's talk about this one I hope you enjoyed it please let me know in the comments below and I'll wrap this up by saying thank you so much for watching really really appreciate it and please do stay healthy stay safe and stay well